What's up team? Today I'm gonna show you how I mark my babies, how I mark them that they shed, they ate. We're gonna take some pictures of them because ultimately uh, a bunch of them have had their third meal so I'll start posting them up on my website or on Facebook or on Instagram. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna go through, check out all these tubs and then show you on the top. I made markings with Sharpie and then I'll show you what they mean. So I'm gonna go through this real quick. This purple mark on the right side of this tub means that they shed. That's the indicator of their first shed. And then these are going to be all the times they were offered meals. So this snake was offered meals three times. Um, the first two meals it took, and then you can see the red mark there that it refused its last meal. So that's how I'm keeping track of who ate, who didn't eat, and making sure that we get at least you know three to five meals in these before we post them up for sale. So right now I'm gonna go through and start putting names and numbers on everything so that I can keep track of these guys because when I take pictures I wanna make sure that the picture is connected to the right animal and the right information that's on top of the tub. Because I don't wanna get the babies mixed up when I take pictures, when I put them up for sale, I wanna know which baby goes to what, you know, which picture is which baby and make sure that everything's correct so I don't get confused. So now I have TA 1 through 18 marked on the tubs and now I think it's about time to get some pictures of them. But first I want to explain what TA is. So TA is going to mean Tony which is the male's name and then Annery which is the female. So it's TA for that was a clutch between Tony and the Annery. So TA 1 through 18. So while I have them out, I'm going to sex them. So I just popped TA11, which is right there, which is going to be a male. Uh, he wasn't the most cooperative in order to get footage of it, but I'll get one that I get good footage of and I'll show you guys how to sex him. All right, so I had to restart the video because I realized that I wouldn't be able to film myself while doing it and get good shots of doing everything. So I wanna have Melissa film it so we can get a good tutorial on how to sex baby corn snakes. So I have a paper towel here because when you're sexing these babies, most of the times they're gonna go to the bathroom all over you. So let's see. Yeah. See, I'm not going to be able to see anything if I have all this stuff in my way. Luckily, this baby hasn't bit me yet, though. Oh, it did just fling some. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Was that pee? No, it's the other stuff. But it's a combination of everything. Yep, that smells real nice. Oh. Yep, they all Ooh. do it. Mm. Oh, okay. This one's a female though. So I know it's really hard to see exactly what I'm doing when I have the little babies and it's kind of zoomed in my thumbs. So what I'm gonna do is do it, I'm gonna show you the technique on a adult corn snake just so you can see it. But the fact is that when all snakes, all snakes that you can pop sex are actually gonna get harder to sex as they get older. So whether it's ball pythons, ball pythons I can usually do it if they're older but it still is harder but Corn snakes, it's almost impossible. I've never been able to pop an adult corn snake. So it's definitely a lot easier with babies, whether it be ball pythons or corn snakes. The corn snake adults, really hard to do it. So, and I've never honestly seen anyone do it on an adult, but um, I'm just gonna show you the technique. All right, so it's a little bit easier to see when the snake's not as big as uh, one of your fingers, but so this is the tail. Obviously the tip of the tail is right here. This is going towards the head. So your thumb is going to want to be right on the other side of the cloaca there. So that is because the hemipenes can actually um, slide up into the cloaca. So you want to make sure that your thumb is there in order to stop them. So the thumb is going to make them pop out once you roll forward. So let me show you. So the thumb is right there and it's pointed like so towards the tip of the tail. And then what you're going to want to do is 
imagine the hemipenes being over here, kind of like tubes of toothpaste, two tubes of toothpaste going down here. And what you want to do is roll the tubes of toothpaste up into where the cloaca is. And then, you know, that, that backwards tilt is going to help you a little bit and then just roll forward. So just roll forward and I'm like I said I can't do it on an adult corn snake. No matter how many times you see it done on video what you really have to do is get together with someone who's done it before and have them show you. That's really the best way and it's the only way you're going to know exactly how much to push. You know how much to push down on this side and roll on that side. I mean it's really just all by feel. What I see is ball python. Uh, you have to do it much, much harder. Corn snakes is very, very light. I mean, they're very, very small in the beginning. So, um, yeah, with ball pythons, it's kind of like more pressure than you would think you would want to put on the snake. But um, you just want to get with someone experienced just to make sure you're doing it right. You don't want to hurt your snake. And you want to make sure that, you know, if you have a male, you don't want to miss sex them. Um, so it's easy to not fully pop a male and say that that's a female. I mean, I could barely see some of the hemipenes on these corn snakes today. So what I do is that every time, if I'm going to sell them or say if you go to a show, um, just sex them before you put them in the display case and then mark them as the proper sex every time. Or if I'm about to ship them out, I'm gonna sex them again. So the thing is, just always consistently making sure that you have the proper snake properly labeled and the proper sex. I mean, it's really important because someone may be growing up this snake for two to three years and then all of a sudden it's the wrong sex. They don't have the right snakes for the project they were originally trying to create. So that can be a real problem down the road. So you wanna make sure that you have the right sex of snake when you're selling. It will make your customers happy and ultimately make you happy when you're doing holdbacks because you want to say, but do I need a female holdback or do I need a male holdback? I don't see anything popping out. Me either. But I'm like, do they have this many males? Females you mean? I thought that was a hemipene for a second, but it was just... Oh, see that? So we have completed the arduous task of checking all the babies, sexing them, taking pictures of them. Um, we only did the ones that have eaten three to five times now. So the other ones that are a little behind, we're not going to mess with them until they're completely ready to go because I just want, you know, the first thing to be that they eat. Um, I don't want to mess with them too much until they get eating. So what I've done is I just organized all the babies into their separate photo albums because I take probably 10 to 15 pictures of all of them so I want to have a bunch of pictures to choose from but I want to keep track of who's who so after every one I did I just created a new album and put all those pictures from that baby in there. That's really the short on how to do it. Um, if you have any questions please ask and I'll also post some pictures um, of this clutch that will be up on my Instagram and on my Facebook. Um, please like, comment, subscribe and if you made it this far you're on the team.